Yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. In this video, I want us to answer some questions. Is it true that Mungiki is re-emerging? And is it true that Uhuru Kenyatta, the former president, is behind the re-emergence of the outlawed sect? And I'm asking those questions because some few days ago, we saw Rigathi Gashagwa in broad daylight claiming that Uhuru Kenyatta is behind the re-emergence of the outlawed sect. Yes, that was Rigathi Gashagwa. And before that, we saw former Mungiki leader Mainanjenga being arrested, accused of holding illegal meetings with the proscribed sect. Where is the truth in all these ladies and gentlemen? I want us to dig deep into all this for Kenyans to understand the games being played behind the scenes. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Any other person watching us outside Kenya, for the very first time, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. If possible, again, subscribe, give this video a like. Let's proceed. Yes. Why is regarding linking Uru Kenyatta to the emergence of Mungiki? And is it true that there is a emergence of Mungiki? Those are the questions I want us to answer accurately in this video. Let me remind you before we answer the two questions that we are still contributing for Nudin Salash from Kajiado undergo a kidney transplant at Medihill Hospital Parklands. Send all your contributions to 0722-735-065. All the contributions will be accounted for and highly appreciated. Let's now jump to our analysis. Why is regarding linking Uhuru Kenyatta to Mungiki? And is it true that there is a reemergence of Mungiki? Let me say this. There is no reemergence of Mungiki. That's the government's question. That's a question of a government that is panicking. Ruto and his team, they know they have failed to deliver. Kenyans are suffering on the ground. The youth are suffering. So it's naturally expected that the youth will rebel against the government. So any rebelling youth be it on the mountain in Nairobi or any other place, I'm seeing a very high possibility where the youth will be branded Amungiki. The truth of the matter, the government has failed to deliver, so it's trying to untwist the youth and to silence the youth from voicing their pains. That's what I'm seeing here ladies and gentlemen. And that in one way goes on to confirm that the government is determined in making sure Kenyans don't criticize the government. I believe that Mainanjenga's hoose started when he was seen aligning himself to Azimio. 
I believe that's where the problem started. All along before he was seen with Rail Odinga, there was no talk of a Mungiki resurgence. But the moment my Nigeria was seen with Azimio, the government started intimidations and branding him a Mungiki and holding illegal meetings. And they have so far taken my Nigeria to court. And from where I sit, without any fear of contradiction, the case is heading nowhere. Because it's clear the government has no evidence against my Nanjenga. It's all politics being played here. And then on the aspect of linking Uru Kenyatta to Mungiki, I'm seeing a regarding the is being misused by some powerful forces in government. Rigadi is being used to fight potential Mount Kenya alternative voices. And in this case, the alternative voice is Uhuru Kenyatta. As things are right now, if Azimio plays it, its politics very well, Uhuru can successfully convince the mountain to rally behind Azimio. And it's simple, Uhuru will just go to the people he will remind them that I told you about, or rather I warned you against voting a Kenya Kwanzaa government. You disrespected me. And you are now seeing exactly what is happening to you. So this time around, <laughs> I think you should believe me. And they will believe Uhuru Kenyatta. Because it's coming out very clearly that what Uhuru was telling them before the elections are exactly the things happening now. So Uhuru was very right and very truthful to the mountain. He told them the truth. He never lied to them. This time around, Uhuru can easily time the times against Kenya Kwanzaa on the mountain. Rigadi is trying to create that bad impression of Uhuru Kenyatta early enough. He wants the mountain to see Uru Kenyatta as the person sponsoring Mungiki, just to create that bad impression of Uhuru Kenyatta. And that can be so because Mungiki might have rained a lot of terror on Kenyans and most so on the mountain, so the people might not be very happy with it. That's the trick Rigadi is trying to use here. Azimio should be very smart. They should not keep quiet as Rigadi and Kenya Kwanzaa runs with that narrative. Because something tells me very strongly that if that narrative is not countered, then it can easily sink. Azimio should move with speed to counter that narrative. Hmm. To brand or rather to expose the lie in that narrative. Uhuru Kenyatta can be a very lethal weapon that Azimio can use against Kenya Kwanzaa on the mountain. That's exactly what I'm seeing here, ladies and gentlemen. And even as I conclude, it's now in no doubt that Truth and his team have failed completely. Nobody can now trust this government. This is a lying government a lying president, a lying deputy president, lying cabinet secretaries. Nobody can trust or even believe what this government is saying. And even on the aspect of Mugiki, Kenyans know that that's just politics being played. But the few togethers, all the few politically naive Kenyans can still believe what Kenya Kwanzaa is saying. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. In case you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. And to send your contribution to enable Nudin Salah from Kajiado and go a kidney transplant, send all your contributions to 0722-735-065. Let's meet.
in our next analysis. Thank you. God bless you.